Okay. Would you begin the city cases tonight? The first one is CU 2016-05 Georgia Beer Company. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a conditional use request um, for two different uses. One is a microbrewery facility, um, and the other one is the event center. Um, these are in CC zoning. But the property is located at 109 South Briggs Street. It consists of 0.41 acres. Back on the screen shows the zoning pattern of the area, the commercial corridor along the south side of West Hill Avenue as you come into the downtown area from the west. And the aerial shows the subject property with the existing rooftop of the existing building, which is the old city of Valdosta Waterworks building, which has been vacant since about 1991. Um, immediately to the east of that, you see the large roof that is the downtown fire station or station number one. And then the upper right hand corner is the city municipal court. And then the parking areas to the west of Bridge Street, those are city owned public parking lots. The applicant is proposing to renovate this building into a microbrewery with an event center built within. The proposed site plan is to eventually acquire this property from the city by way of the development authority. You see the existing building, uh, the main building there in the center, uh, the existing storage building that's to the north that is to remain. Um, and they're not proposing any expansions. It's all interior renovations and adaptive reuse of what is inside. Um, they will utilize the public parking around it as the parking for their facility, um, with the exception of the few spaces of the public parking lot that face the building. Those, I think, will be their primary use uh, for themselves. Uh, floor plan is in your packet, but also on the screen. The building is basically in four quadrants. The upper left quadrant, which is the entrance, um, that is also the event space. The rest of it is the brewery itself, including the brewery operations and storage. And then building elevations, you see this beautiful old brick building. It's in remarkably good shape considering its age. Um, and we would like to respect that and then fix it back up um, like it was many years ago um, to a restored historic building. Um, two different sets of elevations and four different sides of the building. Um, we talked about this at length in the work session. Microbreweries, you may recall from a couple of years ago, was something we added to our use table. It is not a full-scale industrial brewery like Anheuser-Busch. This is something much smaller. Uh, they are limited by state law and actually regulated by state law. Their maximum production does not exceed 15,000 barrels a year, um, which is not a whole lot, but that's something for them to grow into. Um, and the other thing that is currently in the state law is they cannot sell their product from the premises. By law, it must go through a Georgia licensed distributor and then sold that way. Um, so the only thing they can offer is part of the event center function is to have tours of the facility. So usually very interesting and informative. And they can offer very small samples to the touring guests. Um, but that purpose really, the tours, is to promote their product people would need to go buy elsewhere. Um, it makes a very nice venue for a variety of functions um, and sort of showcase, uh, I guess, the growing industry of craft beer and brewery. Um, uh, staff finds this consistent with the comprehensive plan of conditional use review criteria, which are there in your packet, and we're recommending approval of two conditions. The first one is approval shall be granted for a microbrewery and event center facility utilize the historic building and surrounding grounds and shall utilize adjacent or nearby public parking to assist with its usage demands. The event center use of the property shall only be in conjunction with the on-site microbrewery. In other words, the two uses go together. Second, conditional use approval shall expire after three years from the date of approval if no plans for building permit have been submitted by that time. Here we talked about this at length of the work session, so glad to answer any further questions you might have. Any questions for staff? Regina. Oh, Chris Pulse, I'm sorry. Do they plan to be open on the third and fourth Mondays at 8 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> they might. Um, the applicants are here and they can certainly entertain detailed questions. <laughs> any other questions for staff? Here being done. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Take your name and your address for the record, please, sir. I'm Pratt, and I'm on the board for your name, Mr. Stone. And my uh, address is 
977 Northeast Shrine Club Road in Madison. This is my business partner. Uh, my name is Jack Martin. I'm uh, 4963 Sandy Hill Drive in Dallas. And we just wanted to um, thank you for considering our uh, regional proposal and make ourselves available to the commission for any questions that you might have. Uh, Chris, is there, so do you have experience in this or is this a new picture? I'm just curious. Uh, for me personally, this is, this is a new picture. How many barrels a year did you was the maximum? The maximum under state law, what I said, I checked, is 15,000 barrels. That's how many gallons? Uh, well, 15,000 times 55, I think. Uh, 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 31 gallons is a, is a barrel. Yeah. Put that in perspective on our two barrel system. We'll brew anywhere between three and 5,000 barrels a year as opposed to 15,000. Any other questions, Commissioner Hall? Uh, Y'all cannot sell your own brewery, your own beer there by law, except through another <laughs> supplier. Yes, sir, that's regulated by state statutes. So are y'all going to be offering, offering other beers uh, also, or is it just going to be your beers? It will just be our product, mm -hmm. and that will be sampled by uh, the community who takes tours of the property, uh, and it's governed by a recent um, Department of Revenue bulletin that really outlined the uh, Senate Bill 63 is kind of put more regulation on it. So y'all won't be just open to sell beer, y'all have a guest beer kind of tasting, right? That's correct. Okay. Very specific times that will be open, but we won't necessarily be part of the max and the Oh, okay. That's a, a direct question of that then, Jack. So going forward, do you have any plans to open and extend alongside to any can you do a stand alongside and see all these matters? I'm curious. They, as I understand, say all oh, they have to completely isolate the manufacturing. I know, but they, they do a standalone building. Can they sell their product there? Um, not on the same premises. No, no, no. no. Standalone off premises. Can they do like, yes. like they're renting a building downtown? Well, they can. A distributor can. A distributor can. We we actually can. As a well, yeah, I just, I just, I didn't know, I know last week we talked about they couldn't on site, but I thought I heard last week that you could do something on site. Only what we talked about last week was a different use, which is a brew pub. Yes. Which you have a restaurant and microbrewery That's combination. Correct. That's correct. Where they can only sell that on those premises. It cannot be sold off site. Three tier system that's in the There's no one single entity can own manufacturing facility. Distribution. Distribution. So they're all two Any other questions for presenters? Mr. Colson? Not necessarily, Liam, but for Matt. Does anything in the conditioning of this or the permit itself um, hinder them should state law change in regard to what we're just talking about? Um, there is nothing that would hinder them unless we put the limit on there. Um, I mean, it's something I did think about, but given the zoning pattern, I mean, this is a very intensive commercial area, so most any commercial uses are already allowed there. So if a retail facility were to go next door or in this property in place of, that would be fine. Um, it's more of the manufacturing component, and so microbreweries, which are defined both in state law and local ordinance, are the cap. Um, so even if the state law were to change, we still have the local ordinance cap. Um, so that would eventually limit it long term. But as like we talked about the work session at Florida Microbrewery in Savannah, which is one that I think they're planning to model after, uh, which is also below that 15,000 foot cap, and it's a little larger facility than what they're contemplating currently. Um, but they also have room to grow. And, well, and, and as long as it resembles that kind of ease, I think it fits in very well here. Um, in some commercial areas, I would not think that. But here, I think it works well, and hence the conditional use process. On your um, on your first um, condition, on your recommendation, the last sentence of that, what, what is the purpose of that? That is, so the event center, which is only about one-fourth of this building, about 1,200 square feet, uh, remains in conjunction with the microbrewery. So in other words, if the brewery were to move out, this building does not become a 100% event center. Um, to me, that's a whole different kind of review, um, different impacts, particularly when it's a large quantity of public parking that's involved. The use that they're proposing does not have a very high parking demand, 
uh, with the event space being as small as it is. So the intent is to keep the uses together, and if they want to separate in the future, then it's another review process. If I may, when my wife asked me what that line meant, I used the uh, comparison that we, we couldn't rent out that portion of the building for a, a wrestling event, for instance. Um, and, 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 and use the event space for that. It had to be directly correlated to our business, which is the production of play practice. Well, and that, I mean, that, that's actually my thought is you're a, you're a new business and you're starting out. And, you know, does this limit your ability to maybe make some revenue off of a 1,200 square foot area in your building? The only um, other usage besides the touring aspect during those limited hours that we've considered would be such things as private events, such as a, a rehearsal dinner or, or a, wedding, a wedding reception, which in and in of itself would be tailored directly around the, the brewery. Okay. Are y'all going to have any kitchen facilities or would they have to be catered? It would, it would have to be catered. State law would prohibit us from having any type of kitchen facility inside. Any questions, Officer? I applaud y'all for using this building. I'm Here, glad ahead. to see that it's not going to go to waste. It's a beautiful building. Any other questions for Officer? Thank you very much, sir. Is anyone here wishing to speak against this request? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request on form? There being none, commissioners, any discussion on this request? There being none, uh, this time I will take a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wilson. I make a motion we recommend approval to the city council. I have a motion for approval to Mr. Wilson, but I second Commissioner Bolson. Any discussion on this? Is that with the conditions, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, Mr. Willis, will raise his hand? Yes. Say with conditions. Yes. I knew what that meant. Uh, no further discussions at this time. All in favor, sit down, raise your right hand. That's seven zero, Mr. Fellow. That's unanimous.